Uh, we're going to start with the family background segment. What is your name? I'm Grace Paraguya Capula. Uh, where were you born and raised I, in the Philippines? I was born in Cagandero City, Philippines. How many were in your family? We're seven, uh, my parents, and then five siblings. Two boys and then three girls. What do you do for a living in your family in the Philippines? My mom was the dean of the graduate school and a professor of Lourdes College at that time. And my father was the provincial engineer of Misamis Oriental. Uh, what, what, was your family poor or a middle class? I would say we were middle class to up a little, and uh, but not very rich. <laughs> okay. okay. What do you remember about growing in the Philippines? Any memorable moment? Memorable moments. Um, my years, growing up years in the Philippines was really beautiful. It was uh, so um, exciting, inspiring, especially with my when you see your parents really so supportive, so loving, okay. and then when you're so well provided, and then all, all full support with all our activities. Yeah, so my, my memorable moment would be, I would consider, there were a lot, because the, those were the activities when I had in school, when my mom would always be there. So okay. in a gist, uh, my memorable moment would be when my mom was always supportive to me when in all my activities. You always remember that? Yeah. <laughs> what was your daily routine in the Philippines? Daily routine in the Philippines was just simple. Our family was just a simple family. Uh, when I was in elementary, it was uh, home. As you wake up, your food was well prepared. Mm -hmm. We have housemaids who prepare our stuff. Then we go to school, then after school, back home. Then in high school, similar, and then in college, it was most likely just the same with a little extracurricular activities in school, but it was basically home, uh, school, or church, and then back home. Every day, that's the daily routine we do. Okay, how was you school in there, in the Philippines? Oh, it was exciting. Really excellent. I would say perfect. Elementary years, um, I was always in the honor honor list. I was very active in school. All those dancing, theater in elementary. Same with high school. Okay. I was very active as well in school, um, both curricular and extracurricular. I was doing um, uh, directing, and then I was in uh, uh, an officer. Then when I got to college, the more exciting because I was still in the honors class, same as when I was in high school, I was in the honors class, and then, um, but what was more exciting when I got into college was because I went into politics, <laughs> went into politics in, in college, yeah. so I became a, a student council officer, and um, I, 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 I got involved into other, many other more community uh, services mm -hmm. in school, so it was really exciting. Mm -hmm. okay. what, what, and so memorable. <laughs> what were your plans where you were in, in school? My, my, my plans, my future, when I was going to school? Yes, what? Oh, since I was in elementary, I met this uncle who's now here in Texas, yes. and he was a doctor. He was the one who first introduced to me to the, medicine. the medical field, like the idea of becoming a doctor, and I got so enticed. I was so... Um, uh, what's this? I was mesmerized by looking, oh, he's in white, he's a doctor, and then, <laughs> that was just the idea. But that already was planted into my mind, like, I want to be a doctor. But I wasn't that serious, elementary, high school. Then, when I got into college, and my friends were also going to medicine, the more. So after pre-med, BS Biology, I proceeded to medicine, and then my parents were really, really supportive all the way, so I had no problems. I had not much hindrances, yes. except boyfriends. <laughs> no, <laughs> I had no hindrances, really, no whatever. So that was the one in my life, I want to be a doctor. So that was just... Uh, a dream at the start and then it materialized in the end yeah that yes. was a good thing and then he went to america so a little idea of like 
oh, maybe it's nice to be in America. But not so much, really. It was more of, I just wanted really to be a doctor. Yeah. Okay. What was, uh, what was it like, like living during the Marcos Regiment? Okay. Any story that you remember? Okay. Ferdinand Edrini, the late President Ferdinand Edrini Marcos, he, his reign, or his regime as a president was mm. since 1966 to 1986. I was born in 1965. So basically all my years, young to grown up, I, he was the president for 20 years. 20 years. Unfortunately, he was a good leader. He was really a good leader at the start. Unfortunately, his authoritarian um, uh, leadership was became an authoritarian regime mm -hmm. and and he was under criticism by so many um, um people media and everything because he became authoritarian and then he got involved to corruption and uh, suppression of democracy so that's why it was in chaos his ending wasn't really it was traumatic it wasn't nice and then the most story that i can share about his authoritarian regime was the um, people power, mm -hmm. uh, uh, people power, or the EDSA revolution. Everybody in the Philippines, in my my age, my time, the people EDSA revolution, uh, September twenty one, nineteen seventy two. That was very memorable. Yeah. Okay.